back today uh, talking about the uh, Flory uh, Huggins theory again for the entropy, and we're going to talk about enthalpy as well for the mixing of polymers. So we just defined uh, kind of our new definitions of how we're going to look at volume fraction and how we're going to take into account the connectivity of polymers. Um, so now we need to kind of figure out, okay, how is our uh, entropy going to change? Our, our delta S of mixing, how is our delta H, uh, our enthalpy of mixing going to change now that we're dealing with polymers or polymer solvents or different uh, polymer mixing scenarios? So uh, before we do that, again, we always focus on our qualitative understanding. So let's get a physical picture of what's going to happen when we mix polymers. So let's say I have an initial system like so, um, just like we've drawn previously, like this little dividing box where I have my one type of polymer here, another type of polymer right here. So these are the unmixed states. Uh, we could just call this S11, just like we've done previously, S12, or F22, excuse me. And we're going to go to our mixed state, where now we have, uh, this we'll call this guy, uh, no more colors left. So S12, our mixed state. So we're going to have some polymers here, some blue ones, and they're just mixed here. So in here, in here. So, so far, I've been harping on and talking constantly about conformational entropy, configurational entropy. Um, basically, it's associated with, um, you know, when we talked about polymer swelling, we said when we stretch polymers or when our polymer collapses uh, in a bad solvent, we're reducing the number of available conformational states or configurational states of our polymer. So we've been talking so far about configurational entropy or conformational entropy only. Now, what's going to happen to our conformational entropy when we mix our polymers. If my system's large enough, where again, and usually it is, where you know, we're not constraining, we're not stretching our polymers, is my configurational entropy for my blue or green polymers that we see here, is that are we gonna constrain the number of conformations or the number of configurations once we mix? No, no, actually uh, you'll, you'll find and you'll see that the contribution to entropy is not gonna change significantly upon mixing. So again, we're making the assumption that we um, are dealing with ideal chains and that basically that um, they don't see the other chains that they're working. Yeah, we're not basically experiencing or interacting any excluded volume interactions from our other chains. But it's not going to be very um, mixture separated. It's going to be very, very similar. The fluctuations of our conformations along or basically around that center of mass will be basically the same. As long as, again, our box isn't constrained. You know, if we're not perturbing the polymer and if the polymer is not being impinged on uh, I, uh, basically, if the blue polymer is not overlapping, and we're going to talk about um, high molecular weights, we're going to talk about like entanglements, physical entanglements, chemical uh, entanglements, cross-linking later on. But if we're just looking at mixing polymers in an ideal solution without high concentrations, that's a good, uh, that's a very, very valid uh, and safe assumption to make. So we are not going to have to worry about the delta S of conformation or configurational entropy. So what other entropy? Um, is basically changing when we mix these polymers. Well, the entropy is the translational entropy. Now, basically what it's saying is that uh, this center of mass here for this polymer, I can access more states translationally. Um, so I can translate, so let's say that this polymer, I'm gonna do this as my star polymer. So this is my center of mass for this star polymer. That polymer can translate to the center mass here, for example, let's say it moved to that direction. That's one confirmation. In the mixed state, it could be here, 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 here. There's lots of different translational um, entropic states or different microstates where the polymer can exist and translate. So it will move, it will translate some distance. And that center of mass will move and translate. And that's going to open up a number of different microstates. So again, that's going to be the driving force for mixing. As we mix, our conformational entropy doesn't change, but our translational entropy right here is going to increase in our S12 state. So the entire chain can access more microstates. So that's kind of the big, big, big uh, fundamental idea when we're talking about what's the driving force for mixing in our polymer system. It is the increase in, again, delta S of mixing will still always push for, um, for mixing, but uh, it is going to be the translational entropy, not like the con configurational or conformational uh, entropy that we talked about for the Brad Williams in terms of just for molecules. So again, translation of the center of the mass. Um, and basically, you could treat the entire polymer as a small molecule, but it's translating, it's moving. So um, that's kind of the key idea when we talk about the delta S of mixing. Um, so the what follows from that is that the change in entropy doesn't de uh, depends only 
on the number of polymers, right? Because when we look there, if I'm moving monomers, that's not changing my configurational entropy. I need to move the entire center of mass of that polymer. If I need this polymer to move, you know, to translate some distance either here or here or here or here. So I don't really care about, uh, it's not going to, my change of entropy is not going to depend on the number of monomers, just like it was for Bragg Williams, right? It is going to depend on the total number of uh, polymer molecules. So we should expect, and we'll kind of see if the math, again, matches our intuition, but we should expect, um, because, and, and just remember, volume fraction is defined by the number of monomers. We should expect that our entropy of mixing term, because previously our volume fraction, our entropy was purely just, uh, um, our entropy was purely a function of the volume fraction. So the volume fraction is defined as the total number of monomers. Um, but our entropy should scale with the number uh, of polymers. So we should expect that our entropy mixing term should decrease by this factor of one over x, which is the degree of polymerization. Um, so let's see if that uh, let's see if that holds true, and let's see what's the implication uh, of that happening. So let's go ahead and now you could read in a uh, in kind of uh, a text, uh, the, actually the recommended text for this class uh, that goes through the full Flory derivation for the delta S of mixing for polymers. It is very, very, very complicated. So he explicitly counted the number of conformations of monomers and a lattice He assumed restrictions based on the previous missions. He basically is doing a self-avoiding random walk, um, effectively. Um, if you want to look through that, if you want to talk about that derivation, I'd be happy to do so, um, basically offline or online on Zoom. But we are going to focus on a much simpler derivation, which is developed by Hildebrand, which, again, remember our equation for Hildebrand, for chi. So we had... Um, Last time we discussed that we could represent our chi parameter of 1, 2 as a function of the uh, basically the monomer volume times kt times the Hillebrand solubility parameter delta 1, delta 2 squared. So, again, another famous person that we're going to get to know uh, in this course. So, Hillebrand assumed that polymers are completely ideal, and thus you could equate or calculate the entropy of any given state as the entropy of an ideal gas. So, uh, again, if you don't remember from uh, thermo or thermo 1 or thermo 2 or uh, if you study thermo independently, entropy of an ideal gas can be related um, via this function right here, where it's just K log of the uh, volume times number of molecules. So if we have two polymers in our S1, you know, I called this previously S11, S22, again, it's just a different notation, doesn't really matter. But if I want to figure out what is the uh, entropy when I just have a pure polymer 1 system, it's just going to be... N1, V, again, we defined V previously. Uh, you could do the same thing for two. And then for mixing, the number of uh, polymers is just going to be N1 plus N2. That's the only thing that changes. The volume here is just going to be some of those volumes. So when I want to look at my change in my entropy of mixing, so again, you could call this delta S, it's going to be consistent with our previous notation of the S mix, minus S11, minus S2. Uh, but again, same thing. We just plug and chug into this equation. And we are going to find uh, a really nice relationship right here. So remember that V1 was equal to, uh, we defined it previously as N1, X1, divided by N1, X1 plus 2, X2. Assuming again that, as we see here, our V1, V2, our monomer units are effectively the same, this V0 value. So we can see here, we can rewrite this kind of nasty looking expression in terms of P1. So this is just P1 divided by X1. So this is our expression, the molar uh, delta S of mixing term. So you see, let's look back to our old friend, our nice simple friend, uh, although it wasn't simple the first time we derived it, but now you're all experts at Bragg-Williams. This is our expression for Bragg-Williams. It's effectively, when we were talking about just the, the, trans the configurational entropy or the translational entropy of putting molecules, right? So just arranging our number of unconnected monomers. But we said for polymers, monomers are connected. So if monomers are connected, we saw that the translational entropy or the, the entropy that's gained upon mixing is translational. So it depends not on the number of monomer units, but on the number of polymers. So we should have expected that our delta S of mixing should change by this factor of one over R degree of polymerization x. And if you see, and if you look back at the expression that we just derived, it is exactly the same as our previous expression for Rag Williams, but just divided by 1 over x1, 1 over x2. That's it. So it's a beautiful expression. Again, think about what happened here. 
we went from dealing with small molecules, gases, and we just changed, we, we included some new no, uh, notation. We assumed that these uh, materials were ideal connected polymers. We didn't consider anything about bond angles or basically crossover points or two monomers occupying the same site. We just treated it as ideal gases. And we obtain this expression that is very, very simple, very, very general for the ent entropy of mixing change, uh, uh, the entropy of mixing upon mixing uh, essentially polymers or polymer solvents or different solutions. So very, very uh, kind of a beautiful derivation. And you can kind of start to see, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more next time. I plotted, this is the, uh, basically the free energy, uh, I've, uh, not the free energy, excuse me, the Flory Huggins entropy of mixing. So it's just a term that we kind of have dealt with previously here. Um, so I plotted a set, several different scenarios. So when I set my X1 and X2, my degree of polymerizations to one, what's happening here physically? I'm basically dealing with a gas in molecules again, right? But, and you can see my curve looks exactly the same and it, it, it is exactly the same as our Bragg-Williams theory. So that's a good check. But what happens when I change my degree of polymerization so that I'm looking at X1 is my solvent and uh, basically it's just gas molecules or again, solvent, organic molecules. Um, it doesn't have to be organic, but anyways. Um, if I mix it with a polymer, the degree of polymerization of 1000, look at this red curve. I'm still positive. My delta S mixing always um, is always positive. It always pushes for mixing. But you can see now I'm no longer kind of symmetric here. It's saying here, if I plot it as a function of phi 2, uh, again, that's what we're, I've rewritten, rewritten this equation, and phi 2 is related to x2, so my phi 2 is my polymer, uh, if I set my x2 to this you know, 100,000 100, degree of polymerization. So what this is saying is that my entropy is maximized when my phi 2, when my solution is mostly uh, polymers. So again, we get this shift now, our entropy is no longer symmetric. Um, so we maximize our entropy at different kind of, um, uh, kind of scenarios here. So the system is primarily composed of polymers here. So when my system is mostly, my volume fraction is more polymers, I have a higher number of entropy, uh, entropic states. I have a, no, a, liar, a larger number of microstates upon mixing because that solvent can occupy different spaces. But again, either way, our curve here is no longer symmetric. And this is going to be very important when we talk about phase diagrams later. If I just mix two small polymers, two oligomers, you see my delta S of mixing, it decreases, right? Because as X1 and X2 decreases, my driving force for mixing has become more, it's basically more, um, there's less of a driving force because again, we're dividing by these degree of polymerization. And there's less of a driving force because unlike with small molecules where there's lots of number of microstates, our microstates are kind of restricted by our number of polymers. They have some volume where, again, they can only translate into so many different configurations. When I have small molecules, there's so many different number of microstates, so many different lattice points that I could occupy. So you see here that my curve is lower, the magnitude. It's still always positive. And now if I mix polymers or anything else that's symmetric in X1 and X2, my curve is also symmetric. So here, if I have two symmetric polymers, when I have an equal number of, or equal volume fraction of those polymers, that's when my uh, entropy is maximized. More on this later in this kind of asymmetry, but this asymmetry is going to lead to some interesting phenomena. So... Uh, right here, we use this assumption. Again, term scaled as we expect. So, are you ready for the enthalpy of mixing derivation? Really tough. Don't, uh, so, actually, it's really uh, trivial and easy, <laughs> thankfully, uh, because that other derivation was not, uh, even though it was nice and uh, really straightforward, or not straightforward, but um, it's beautiful in its uh, kind of the assumptions and simplicity, it's not that easy. So, enthalpy is not going to change uh, too much. Why? because we're assuming these ideal chains. Um, we could get more complicated and include details about chain connectivity or bond angles or, uh, again, they self-avoided random walks, excluded volume, um, but it's only going to change ZXI. Um, so that's the number of sites are, you know, around each monomer. But again, it's going to be very, 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 you know, uh, changing this term here, basically this uh, Z value, ZXI, that is not going to, again, we're looking, we're concerning about scaling. So we're going to scale with little n, which, again, is not a good notation here, but it's x2. And x2 is going to be, again, it could be 100k, it could be 10k, et cetera, et cetera. So including those details for, again, switching from uh, monomer units or molecules to connected now polymers is not going to change your enthalpic. Uh, your enthalpic change upon mixing is not going to be uh, incredibly different for monomers versus polymers. So 
we actually get uh, basically an enthalpic contribution that's identical to our small molecule case. And again, the key thing here is this chi parameter. So that chi parameter, remember, tells us, if you remember back, it's right here. The chi parameter tells us if chi is greater than zero, large, the interaction from one and two is extremely large. They do not want to be uh, together, so that is going to push for phase separation or demix, demix state. So generally speaking, your enthalpic contribution will always push towards um, demixing. Again, we want to make this, uh, if that is that chi value is large, mixing, S mix. This always pushes for mixing, but if our chi is large, that's going to increase my energy here. It's going to increase energy here. That is not a good state, so we will not want to be mixed. So uh, next time, we're going to look at the total uh, flowing free energy for mixing the polymers. Uh, we're going to look at some different scenarios, look at the phase diagrams, and give a brief introduction, uh, and hopefully a little bit of a reminder of how to create and interpret uh, phase diagrams. Um, and it might be a little bit different, hopefully you remember, from uh, material science, but if not, we're going to look at the specific cases for polymers. So I uh, will see you next time. All right, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, be safe and have a good one. Bye.